today we are going to talk about some data warehousing concepts first of which is uh, called dimensional modeling so this is a kind of model that is very different from the entity relationship model that is seen in old data systems this model is very simple it's also called a star star schema and that's because uh, the tables look like a star so there is one central uh, table called a fact and uh, which is surrounded by um several different um dimension tables um so uh, let's look at an example of uh, a dimension table or dimension dimensional model so we have a sales uh, fact so let me so the, this is this is called a fact table this is a central table it is surrounded by this dimension so is this date dimension customer dimension and product dimension the fact table contains uh, the measures of the business so uh, the, in this case it contains the daily sales done by a customer against uh, different products this the daily part or the sales amount this part is called is also called the grain of the fact table so the different kinds of fact tables also include uh, let's say inventory in the hr function if you're looking at uh, how many people join on a day that's that could be another fact table uh, how many people visited my website that could be another so most of the fact tables um, have the measures which are uh, like units here or the amount these are generally numeric and additive so if you want to roll up roll up the data uh, you can basically do a sum across those uh, measures there are some use cases where uh, fact tables store uh, non additive uh, measures and uh, we'll look at them in later uh, videos the dimension tables um, describe the measure so so these uh, the, the the customer dimension describes the customer the product dimension describes the product similarly the date dimension here it describes the date you know which fiscal year or quarter does the date fall in uh, is it a holiday things like that and these uh, dimension tables are uh, denormalized so that means the redundancy is redundancy is and that's because in the dimensional model we are looking at a model that is very simple uh, to query and maintain so the, as you can see the fact table con contains of um, numerous keys so these this concatenated key is also called the composite key um and it has foreign keys to dimension tables so an example of a query that we can fire against the dimension table is let's say we want to see how many units sold and what is the sales amount for the all the fiscal quarters in 2013 and broken down by product so this is how we write the query so we are querying the sales uh, fact table joining with uh, the dimension table and the product table you know see you see joins are very simplistic uh, it's always on the on the keys Uh, and there is just always one key in the dimension table on which to join and then there is a filter because we want to look at 2013 there is a filter on the dimension table so an on an attribute of the dimension table and uh, finally we are doing aggregations on different um, measures and these are uh, dimensions uh, against which we will be reporting the results so there is another variant of the a dimensional model that is called a snowflake let's look at how a snowflake would would look like so a snowflake has you know the regular fact table it has dimensions as well but the dimensions are somewhat normalized so let's say this is a customer and uh, let's say it has customer key and let's say there is let's say there is a customer um, city So, so previously we only had city here and we had state as another attribute now let's say we took out city and normalize it so let's say city is the city dimension and it has a city key so the city key and we take out state here and we put a city name and a state in another dimension so so basically this is now looking like normalized model so uh, we could do similar things here and uh, we could do for, and 
this could basically link to multiple different tables. So here it could it could be another called uh, customer category dimension. So the the benefits of this uh, kind of model, uh, which is called Snowflake, it conserves space because normally this model is more tuned towards uh, reducing redundancy and conserving space. This is uh, applicable wherever the dimensions are uh, big and uh, but but uh, most cases you know the the cons are uh, that it complicates complicates query so if if you want to aggregate results by by the state then you have to traverse uh, go to customer then go to customer then go to city dimension so uh, that that's that's why the query becomes a uh, little complicated what are the considerations or what are the steps we need to take when we design a warehouse? So the first, uh, the very first step like all other projects is requirements. So we need to know what is the goal of the warehouse. Uh, so what is the warehouse supposed to do? What kind of analytics is it supposed to, is it supposed to service? And it's okay to have a draft requirement and iterate it as uh, we move forward in the project. And that is typical of non warehousing projects as well. So the second thing we have to look at is business process. What is the business process we are modeling? This relates very closely with the goal of the warehouse. It's always uh, easier if the data is being collected for that particular process. For example, you know, we want to analyze the sales process. We want to uh, we want to know that the sales of the goods are uh, being uh, captured somewhere. Next is uh, the grain of the process. What is the lowest level, lowest level of the data that needs to be collected in the fact table? For example, the grain is uh, if the grain is monthly, then we want to measure. Um, if the grain is monthly, we just need to store the monthly uh, data. An example is we want to measure monthly customer visits to our uh, website. Next is uh, we have to define what are the dimensions against which we want to measure the business. Things like customer, time, product, region, promotions. These are all very typical uh, dimensions. Next, measures. Uh, what are the facts that we want to store or we want to record? Okay. Next, uh, let's talk about sizing of the warehouse. So we saw the previous example where we had uh, the sales fact and we had the customer dimension, product dimension and uh, date dimension. Uh, if you see, let's let's go back to it. So here, typically the 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 dimensions have a lot of attributes. The dimensions here have a lot of attributes, while and they are translated into the into the fact table by their keys. So these keys are literally the keys to all those attributes. So the fact table is normally thinner, but more number of records. The, the dimensions are normally fatter and low number of records. In comparison, it's all relative. So fatter means more number of columns. So all this uh, is very uh, is done for a purpose, and that's that is the the main the main reason is query uh, query time. You know, it's very fast if we if it's modeled in this way. So so let's look at the sizing one more time. So the number of um, Columns in the fact table here. If you see, you know, this is a typical. Ex we want to go through some steps to know what is the size of the warehouse. You know, how do we how do we find out how much space is occupied by the warehouse and what are the different components? Um, which table takes up how much space? So, if you see the sales fact, I've put as uh, ten number of columns, and an average number of columns for the for the dimensions is thirty. And uh, average size of the column is five for the sales fact because most of the keys are uh, most of the columns are keys, um, not text uh, textual attributes. While for dimensions they are textual attributes. And uh, so if you multiply ten by five, we got fifty, which is the size of a record. This is the average. Is these are all average sizes? And then uh, customer dimension, uh, date, and product dimension, the average size of uh, 1500 bytes. Now, uh, let's assume that there will be 
twenty percent growth in the business. So sales fact is supposed to go over twenty percent. Customer dimension is supposed to go by twenty percent, and uh, product dimension will also go by twenty percent. Date dimension will stay almost constant because date dimension dictated by number of days in the year. So let's look at uh, how the sizing looks. So for two thousand thirteen, so for the first year, let's say we we're building the warehouse the first time this year, then uh, the number of records is. Uh, and the number of records we took some assumptions of uh, this is let's say um, half a billion um, or 500 million records, 500 million sales done by 10 million customers, um, and let's say we have 5,000 products. So the size of the warehouse in in 2013 uh, would be uh, size of the record multiplied by number of records. And um, so we see that 25 gigs occupied with sales flat. And I wanted to show you um, how much is occupied by the customer dimension and uh, the other dimension. So see 25 gigs is occupied with sales fact, but only half a gig is occupied by the customer dim. So, and the date dim and the product dimension are all very, very small. So in total, if you see, the 99% of the size of the warehouse is is taken up by the fact tables. So uh, even if there was 20% growth um, in in the year, uh, you still see here it's 30 30 gigs, and um, the fact table is also 30 gigs. Here is 36 gigs in 2015, and um, Similarly, you know, it's still it's still the fact table that is contributing the majority of uh, the space of the house. This uh, uh, this exercise was just to show how to size a warehouse or how to size one component of the warehouse, and also what con contributes most to the to the growth in the warehouse. And the answer is it is uh, fact table. So. This is where um, most of the effort goes towards uh, uh, towards optimization.